Melissa will probably be joining us here very soon, especially within the next 24, if not 36 hours, as Invest 98L continues to get its act together in the Eastern Caribbean, south of Puerto Rico, in the eastern fringe of the Dominican Republic. Folks, welcome back to the Weather Center. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your Monday night to join me here. I do apologize for the latency in this video. It's taken a lot to put some stuff together and really break it down to you to the best of my ability. So as a result, we're running a little behind and I'm going to kind of expedite the fashion with which I give you this information because it has been difficult for the last few days. And there's also some rumors out there in circulation about this channel being amongst the folks who really just don't know anything and apparently we're scaremongering. I'm going to digress on that. I want to get into the information, but I do sincerely appreciate all my OGs and my newest subscribers who have been showing such generous support. I sincerely, my heart goes out to all of you, and we're going to be watching this closely, consistently through the Caribbean, especially for Hispaniola, Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, Cuba, and then the Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas. It does look like the window of opportunity for this to be a Central America, let alone a United States threat, is rapidly closing, but we still have an enormous margin of error to iron out. So if you are brand new to the channel, it would mean the world to me if you kindly consider hitting that subscribe button. Let's give that like button a little nudge, get the proper information out to folks who need it. Let's share this content with those you believe would benefit from it, and drop me a comment in the comment section down below. I really want to hear from you if you may be in the direct line of sight within this system as it continues to develop and possibly slings up towards Haiti, the Dominican Republic, or moves as far west as Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, and portions of Cuba, and then the Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas, you'd be right up next. And I'm telling you, we still have that 1% to 2% chance that Florida may see some impact from this system. I've never once said a direct landfall, nor did I say that it's time to batten down the hatches. That's also the rumor in circulation out there. If I did say that, let me know in the comments as well. But from what I can remember, I've been mentioning we just need eyes on this situation, and now it's beginning to unfold. So let's go ahead and get you over to National Hurricane Center's homepage. As of the recent 8 o'clock outlook, we are now up to a 90-90 split, 90% chance this develops within the next two days, 90% over the next seven days. It is still continuously battling westerly and northwesterly wind shear that has given a lopsided appearance to the thunderstorm action and kind of displaced a lot of the convection from where our mid and low level circulations are trying to develop. But even the National Hurricane Center goes on to mention interest in Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, Jamaica, and Cuba should monitor the progress of this disturbance as there is a risk for heavy rainfall, flooding, strong winds, and rough surf. And to tell you the truth, the strong winds and heavy rainfall are definitely becoming a lot more likely, especially as this system tries to get its act together. If you look at the true color visible satellite shot, we're really starting to develop that low level spin. It's very difficult to notice here because you've got a lot of that upper and mid-level cloud cover being bullied towards the east as a result of that wind shear. Let me go ahead and get my epic pen up. I actually didn't pull it up just yet. There you go. I'll go ahead and draw it. We are still unaligned. We're still kind of lopsided thanks to the wind shear coming across this thing. If you look at your upper level clouds, we've got a really good corridor of westerly upper level winds ripping across the center of this feature. In the yellow looks to be whereabouts we have our low level spin, somewhere near where that high top of thunderstorms just blew up over the last hour or so, and then it's pretty obvious where your mid-level spin is. The mid-level spin is still back over in this area. So you can see that we are really asymmetrical still, and a ton of the thunderstorms, let alone the cirrus blow-off, is all on the eastern side of this system as it roughs it towards the west, being buffeted by that wind shear, but all in all, still a healthy system. It's going to do its best to try to become a tropical depression, if not a tropical storm, as we go through Tuesday and then into to Wednesday. Now, one thing I want to rip the Band-Aid off immediately, and to tell you the truth all, you know, especially with the scaremongering comments that are going around, I'm pretty done with this hurricane season. It's been a lot of the same business, a lot of the same back and forth. Our computer models have not thrown us a lot of bones this hurricane season. They've been doing some really wonky things and still are, even as of this evening. 
But you know me, I love to look long range. A few of my other buddies behind the scenes and I have been collaborating about this. And if you look out to the beginning of November, we've got yet another potential signal down there in the Central and Western Caribbean. Just putting your eyes on it. Again, that's been the name of the game. The key messaging, as National Hurricane Center likes to say, the key messaging on this channel is we're just trying to get eyes on potential threats as far out in time as possible. If you think it's fear mongering, absolutely yell at me in the comments. I'm big on situational awareness, and I really want people to be aware of what could possibly be coming down the pike, especially since we already have a current threat that could be potentially impacting thousands of people down in the Caribbean and then in the Western Atlantic over the next seven days. We don't need something back-to-back -back immediately in the same spot, but just know I am watching it. These are your forecast anomalies, and when you look at the forecast itself as you go through the first 10 days of November, looking at a very similar story, something trying to sneak on out of there, remnant gyre mechanisms, maybe some leftover tropical waves meandering through the flow. There are still a couple of them out there, but we'll talk about that at another point in time. I want to get you over to the ensembles right now to show you just how broken up we still are with this system. This is going to be your super ensemble product with a blend of all sorts of different computer models. You've got the UK model, the Euro, and the GFS all put together, as well as the Canadian model. It's just a mashing together of every piece of data, at least reputable pieces of data that are ingested into this supercomputer outlook and watch how rough the trends still are with this system. As you go over the next five to seven days, we are still seeing an exceptional fanning out. If you look at this blue ellipse right here, that is showing you the margin of error as to where this system could be in the next seven days. Some are still trying to flirt with Nicaragua and Honduras. Others put it into the Gulf of Honduras, moving up back towards the Cayman Islands or the Yucatan Channel. And then the GFS has been the most bullish of them all, trying to get this thing over Hispaniola within the next three days. Days, give or take, and then putting it in the southwestern Atlantic. So we still have an enormous margin of error, and that has made things exceptionally difficult with trying to track the progress of this system, especially since each one of our computer models run to run are showing something relatively different, and then there really hasn't been a persistent trend going in one direction or another. If you look at the model tracks here, this also puts it into perspective as well. You've got a large blend of different track models on here that go right over the Dominican Republic or over portions of Haiti and the Turks and Caicos. Then you have others clobbering Jamaica and eastern Cuba and the easternmost Bahamas, the Turks and Caicos as well. And then the Cayman Islands are still on the radar with this as well to include our northwestern Bahama Islands. An enormous spread here and a potential stall that will have to really be on the lookout for the GFS and the Euro AI especially are suggesting we could see a very destructive stall over some densely populated areas and mountainous regions of Haiti and the Dominican Republic, which would produce anywhere between 6 to 12, if not upwards of 20 inches of rainfall if it decides to get stuck down there. We do not want that to happen whatsoever. Now, moving over to our active cyclones, number one, I want to show you what our Euro computer ensembles are showing with that enormous fanning out. This is called dispersion and bifurcation. You have one cluster of solutions that go in one direction and then another batch of solutions that go in another direction. And it really has not shrunk down at all whatsoever. You can see an enormous fanning out. As we go 7 to 10 plus days out, some members getting dangerously close to the Florida Straits, the Florida Keys, a lot going over the Bahamas, the Cayman Islands. Jamaica definitely seems like a target for this system if it continues to get stuck underneath a collapsing ridge axis and our easterly trade winds begin to weaken. You kind of find yourself in that pocket of convergent flow down in the low levels, really good rising motions high up in the atmosphere, and that slows down the steering. And we're also in between troughs and cold fronts coming off the eastern United States, so it could possibly stall out down there. It's going to be tricky. If it does stall, it could stall near a spot, near an island or two, and that would wreak havoc on that location, and that's what we're very closely monitoring to get this forecast dialed in for you. It does seem like in terms of your margin of error, Florida is just about out of that margin of error. It looks like from Haiti 
the western fringes of the Dominican Republic, much of Cuba, the Cayman Islands, and the Bahamas are primarily where we see this system tracking. This is echoed across the Canadian and the GFS ensembles, as well as our AI ensembles. Especially when you look at the Gen C and the FNV3, there are two distinct camps. Needless to say, one of the key takeaways here is if this thing rockets north early, that's good news. I know that we're still going to have to deal with a lot of rainfall and a lot of gusty winds, but if this thing meanders over open water and jogs towards the west and gets trapped down there, this will easily become a major hurricane and we are going to cook over the hot waters of the central and western Caribbean. You can see that communicated here very well. The first camp going back up towards Haiti keeps this as a tropical storm, if not a low-end hurricane. If it sticks around in the Caribbean and meanders very slowly to the left of that that first batch of ensembles, you are going to be looking at a major hurricane, Melissa. That is one thing we can just about lock in at this point, and that's something we really want to avoid because, again, like I've echoed across multiple updates up to this point, anything down there that decides to marinate and get going, someone is going to receive it, and if we have to receive a major hurricane, I will definitely be watching that, and I'll be covering it for you all to get you all the latest info on how to prepare for those impacts. Then I also want you to watch down in here as well as we get to Halloween and just beyond that we do still have a couple of rogue members that come in after the fact. Could be a separate system, could be this thing getting stuck down there for 15 some odd days. I'm going with the former. This could possibly be a signal for a weak system into early November trying to stir up. If you look at our latest velocity potential anomaly, it actually shows we could still be in for a interesting November. I'm not going to say busy just because this hurricane season is not played by the rules whatsoever, but if you look at the way our MJO is progressing, we're looking at another big round of favorable conditions coming Coming in around Halloween towards the end of this month, likely also a mirroring of what could still be down there in terms of 98L slash future Melissa into the first 10 days of November. We get a week break and then towards Thanksgiving all the way out to possibly December 1st, we've got another solid pass, and I'm going to continue to watch whether or not this trends or not. When you look at our Euro extended range MJO forecast, it's going to circle back around as well, which by the way, correct me if I'm wrong. But looking at this map and other dynamical models as well as a current graphic for where the MJO is, this is looking very phase three. But somebody just lit me up in the comments of one of my previous updates saying we're in phase five, which doesn't favor Atlantic activity. It looks like we won't reach rate phase five for another 10, 15 days, so I don't know. Maybe I've been reading this wrong all this time, but I digress. And forgive me for the, the jaded sound in my voice and in my comments. I'm just saying, you know, there's a lot of weird misinformation flying around everywhere and I work as hard as I can for you all to decipher all of that and get you what you need to equip you with the tools necessary to make critical decisions in a time like this for all of our friends down there to the south of central Florida in the Caribbean but I digress at the end of the day and that's where we will go ahead and leave the video. I know that I'm running very behind. I didn't want to take up too much of your time, so I know this was a very fast-paced update, but I just wanted to get this out into the interwaves, into the interwaves, so you all can try to process this. We got to start really battening down the hatches and making sure our preps are dialed in from the Cayman Islands, Western Cuba, all the way back towards the Dominican Republic. Puerto Rico, you're looking very good down there, which is great news. We just really have to see what happens over the next three to five days. If this does not not move into Hispaniola, we're going to have problems. Regardless, as I've mentioned prior to, and I really don't care if you want to call it fear mongering, we're going to have problems because there's a system down there and it's going to want to move somewhere. It's not going to just disappear. Someone is going to receive it, which has been the consistent messaging I've wanted to get across to you all through this channel. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you've had a great start to your week. I hope this week continues to do well for you and you continue to stay safe, especially if you're down there watching 98L Future Melissa closely. Just know that I'm in your corner. I'm going to be watching your six every step of the way, and you can count on the Weather Center to get the info that you need in a timely, accurate, and reliable fashion. So until next time, this is Weather Center Nazario signing out.